everyone, Kat over here with Confessions of the Perfect Mom. Today I thought we would talk about baking bread. I know I've had some tips and tricks about bread making in previous videos, so I thought maybe we would kind of combine everything all together and make some awesome dinner rolls. So these are my, what I call, French bread dinner rolls. They are super easy, they are super forgiving, you're totally going to be able to make these. So before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below, uh, that way you don't miss anything coming up. So okay, let's go ahead and get started. You're going to need a few different things to get this going, but they're all simple ingredients. So first and foremost a packet of yeast. Uh, this is what's going to make your bread rise and make it fluffy and all of that. So make sure you have that. It really doesn't matter what brand you're using. Um, just you need yeast. Okay. You will need all-purpose flour. Um, I don't use any fancy bread flours. I know people ask me all the time. Um, I just use regular flour. We are going to need salt, again, just regular table salt works, some vegetable oil. You can also use olive oil in this. Um, it gives it kind of a more robust flavor, I guess you could say, so that would totally be fine. Um, and then last but not least, some sugar. Okay, so with those simple ingredients, we're going to be able to make awesome French bread rolls to go on your dinner table. Sorry, that would be my ice machine. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, we need to proof our yeast. Okay, if you've seen my videos before about our bread making tips and tricks, you will know why we need to do this and how you're going to. Um, I'll drop a link to that down below so you guys can see but there is a lot of great information there as to why you always want to proof your yeast. Even when it says quick rise, even when it says you don't have to, then you're gonna want to do that. So we're going to add like half a tablespoon of sugar with our yeast packet. We're gonna put about half a cup of water or so. You want this to be really hot. So, not quite boiling, if you put boiling water in on this, um, you're going to kill your yeast and it's going to defeat, like, the entire thing of what you're trying to do. So, you're going to put the sugar in, the yeast in, the warm water in. You want to mix it all up. You really want to get that yeast dissolved into the warm water so it has time to start doing its thing. Okay. It's pretty... Dissolved in there. Awesome. Okay. So we are just going to set this off to the side while we are preparing the rest of our dough. And we're going to let that proof and get all of its stuff going. Okay. So we are going to start with flour. You're going to need about three and a half to four cups of flour. Um, I started, I already put two in here just so you didn't have to wash and measure out flour. Um, and then another two cups here for us to use. We are going to need three, sorry, I have my little cheat sheet over here. And don't worry if you guys need help, I will drop a link down below to this recipe so you can go to my blog and print it out and all that fun stuff. So, we are going to need three tablespoons of sugar. Okay. And then we are going to want two teaspoons of salt. Okay. Once we have all of our dry ingredients together, we let's do the spoon from here. We are gonna want to stir this all up. Now people ask me, well, why do you want to stir your dry ingredients before you put in your wet ingredients? And really it is to make sure that everything is well incorporated. That way you don't end up with 
a really salty bite or a really sugary bite. So we're going to go ahead and just mix that up a little bit. Okay, so that's pretty much included. Now we are going to want to add two tablespoons of our vegetable oil or the um, olive oil. You guys decide to do that. That would work too. So, did you guys all hear my bottle pop there as it like exploded all over the place? Hopefully my camera would pick up that too and not just the ice maker. Okay, so two tablespoons of that. Now, since we use half a cup of water already in our yeast, we're just going to add one cup now of warm water. And again, you want it to be like a little bit warmer than warm, but you don't want it to be boiling because then you're going to end up with it being like way too hot. So go ahead and dump that in. And we're going to go ahead and start stirring it up. Now, it's going to end up, and it's going to be pretty sticky. It's going to be pretty mushy. You're going to have almost like cake batter type situation going. Don't worry. That is how it all starts. Okay. So, I don't know if the camera can pick up in there, but you can see that's how it's kind of getting started. Also, we're at the point where we're ready to add the yeast and you should see that it has all been like proofed and it's starting to get foamy up at the top. Again, if you have questions about your yeast or how to prove or how to see if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, check out that link down below. Um, it's a five minute video all about doing this with your yeast and what to look for and all things like that. So we're going to go ahead and add that in. And now we want to add the rest of our flour. So we're going to go ahead and add probably like two thirds of that in there. Keep a little bit to the side just in case it's a little bit much. And we are, I was really brave. I'm doing this video with all this flour in black and normally it ends up like all over the place. So we'll see. We'll see if I'm still wearing black by the end of this video. Okay, so that's starting to come together quite nicely. And you can just keep mixing that all up. Um, we're still a little sticky, so we'll go ahead and set my spoon. Okay, set my spoon over here. So we're going to want to start to knead the dough at this point. We're going to add a little bit more flour. I don't want it to be super sticky. It's sticky. It's like, ugh. Okay. So we added that extra flour. We're going to kind of mix it in just really gently to start with so it kind of gets incorporated all over. And I like doing this in a great big bowl, but you can totally just do this on your countertop too. Um, I'll probably do that here in just a moment once we get the right consistency here. People always ask me, well, how do I know if it's too sticky? You see, it's ended up all over my hands. It's too sticky. When you're done doing it all, you actually shouldn't have any like on your hands. And that's kind of my like judge for me as to knowing when my dough has enough flour is that it stops sticking. Okay, so we're getting there. I'm going to go rinse my hands, so hold on. Okay, I'm back. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put this out on my counter. Um, I'm going to add just a little bit of flour to the surface because I don't want it to stick to my counter. I have definitely made that mistake before. And well, then things get really, really messy. 
So we're going to go ahead and just knead this all out. You can tell now that it's a much better consistency. It's not sticking to my counter at all. I have very little sticking to my hands. I have mostly just the flour that's sticking. And you're going to feel it's going to be really, it's kind of a fluffy dough. It's really soft. It's not real hard to work with. So you just want to knead it for a few moments. It's starting to stick again. Let's add. Make sure we're just having the flour everywhere. Okay. So it feels like everything is all meshed in. We're starting to have like this stretchy consistency. It's sticking a little bit more, which I'm not sure why. We can always add just a little bit more flour to it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put it back in the bowl and we are going to set this up so it has a nice, warm, humid place to rise. Um, I put mine in my oven. That's where I really like to do it. And again, I'll link the video down below of why you do it in your oven and the tips and tricks for making sure that it rises really, really nicely in there for you. So check out down. It's like really nice. I'm really impressed. It turned out really good this time. Okay, so I'll link that video down below. We are going to let this rise for one hour. And then I'll be back once uh, it's risen. Thank you guys. Hey everyone, welcome back. Okay, so you have let your dough rise for about an hour. And it should be looking pretty amazing. You should have, it should have at least doubled in size. So that's kind of what ours looks like. Alrighty, now the fun part. We are going to work on the dough and get it shaped into our dinner rolls. So you can use anything you want that will cut dough. I have a plastic scraper that we're going to use today. So to start with, you're going to want to lightly grease, or not grease, lightly flour whatever surface you're going to use. Um, I like using like a little wooden block of stuff. I guess it's like a wooden cutting board. So that's what I like. Okay, so you're going to want to lightly flour your hands so things don't stick. And we are going to very gently pull this out. Now, um, it probably is going to stick. And that's just fine. And I like to put a little bit of flour also on top of the dough. And that way, again, we're just doing the least amount of sticking as possible. Okay. So that side's all nice. We'll flip it over. We'll make sure this side gets a little bit more flour. Okay. So we're going to take it. We're going to cut it in half. The half that we are not working with, whoo, just go ahead and put right back into your bowl. Okay, so this half we're going to cut in half, and then we're going to cut each of those halves in half. So you can cut them in half one more time, but I like a little bit bigger of a roll, so we're going to make eight rolls instead of 16. So, you just kind of wind them into your hand until they make a little round, kind of like a roll shaped thing. So, again, these are going to be fairly good size dinner rolls. But, and let's be honest, if you're making your own homemade bread, you like bread to start with, so you might as well give yourself the big rolls. Now you don't want to push too hard as you're shaking this because then you'll lose the rise that you just spent an hour working on. Okay. Grab out that other half. Cut it in half. In half again. Okay. 
you have one that has a little bit of stick to it, just add a little extra flour. I'm just going to gently shape it into a ball here. I mean, I love playing with the dough and, and touching it and feeling it. So you'll see, like, it should be light and fluffy. Ooh, chunk. You don't want to be kneading it or anything like that at this point. So all the swings will just add it into that one. Okay, so. You can see we have all eight of the doughs. They don't have to be perfect. You know, mine are very rustic looking, but this is kind of what you want. Now we're gonna let this rise for another half hour and they will plump back up and kind of give a little bit more since you just spent all that time messing with them. So we're gonna let this rise for another half hour. Then we're going to put it in a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes. So I will come back as we're pulling them out. Alrighty guys, and there you have made your French bread dinner rolls. Hopefully your house smells absolutely amazing baking all this fresh baked bread. These rolls are super easy. You guys can always add garlic and rosemary to them to make them garlic rosemary dinner rolls. You could do a egg wash on top if you want your crust to be a little crunchier. There's all kinds of ways to dress these up. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything coming forward. Alrighty guys, go and enjoy your bread. Thank you very much.